In this video, we'll start the study of transformations of graphs. Specifically, we're going to look at how to vertically shift graphs. There are two types of transformations we're going to eventually talk about. The first is a rigid transformation. A rigid transformation simply maintains the shape of the basic parent function. So that is, we're going to pick it up and move it maybe left, right, up, or down. And then there are non-rigid transformations that distort the shape of the original graph in some way. Let's consider this example where we have f of x is equal to one of our basic functions, the absolute value function, and we want to graph each of the following functions and state how it relates to the graph of f. I've already got the graph of f drawn. Recall that the basic absolute value function is a v-shaped graph through the origin, and it goes through 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. The graph we want to look at is g of x, which is equal to f of x plus 2. Well, in our function that we're given, f of x is absolute value of x. So g of x is really nothing more than the absolute value of x plus 2. So if our input in the function is negative 2, g of x is absolute value of negative 2 plus 2, which is 2 plus 2, or 4. If our input into g is negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 2, or 3. If we input 0, we get absolute value of 0 plus 2, which is 0 plus 2, or 2. The absolute value of 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 2, or 3. And the absolute value of 2 plus 2 is 2 plus 2, or 4. So on the graph of g, we have these points negative 2, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 4. So drawing a graph between these points, should give us a V-shaped graph, and notice the relationship. It is the exact same graph, just picked up and moved up two units. So we say that the graph of G is the graph of F shifted up two units. So notice that this outside addition of 2 increased all of the y values by 2 units, which caused that shift up, that vertical shift up. Now let's use the same function, absolute value of x, and look at g of x, which is f of x minus 3. So g of x in this case is the absolute value of x minus 3. So when we input negative 2 into the function g, we get absolute value of negative 2 minus 3, which is 2 minus 3, or negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 minus 3 is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. Absolute value of 0 minus 3 is 0 minus 3, or negative 3. Absolute value of 1 minus 3 is 1 minus 3, or negative negative 2, and absolute value of 2 minus 3 is 2 minus 3, or negative 1. So now we have negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 1. So notice the shape of the graph has not been distorted. It looks exactly the same. The difference is that now the graph is shifted down three units. Notice that every y value 
on the new graph is three units less than the y value on the original function. And so we say here that the graph of g is the graph of f shifted down three units. So notice that this outside change, that is we have that basic function, but we're adding and subtracting a number from it, that affects the y values and causes the graph to shift up or down. In summary, we can write this. So the graph of y equals f of x plus k, where k is greater than zero, is a graph of f shifted up k units, the point x, y is on the graph of f, then the point x, y plus k is on the graph of y equals f of x plus k. Similarly, if we look at the graph of y equals f of x minus k, this is a graph of f shifted down k units. If the point x, y is on the graph of f, then the point x, y minus k is on the graph of y equals f of x minus k. So the outside change denotes a shift of the graph in the y direction, either up or down.